Hi, this is Mike Arison from Ferry Products. In a previous video, we looked at how to identify the material that an unknown ferrite core is made out of by looking at the permeability of the core. Now we did that on toroidal closed magnetic structure type ferrites, um, such as this toroid or the shield bead, but not all ferrite cores are toroidal closed magnetic structure. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to identify the material of a rod type ferrite core with an open magnetic structure. Initial permeability of the material is not gonna be as straightforward as in the previous video. Uh, to start off with, let's take a look at what we mean by open magnetic structure. So here's a little simulation of one of our ferrite rods here. And if we take a look, this is the ferrite core here in the center. And these two rectangles on either side represent the winding of the core. The lines through here are representative of the path that the flux is traveling uh, in the core. So we're calling this an open magnetic structure because the flux is by majority going through open air as opposed, through, as opposed to in a toroidal type structure going through the core material. So when we're talking about a closed magnetic structure, any of the characteristics that we're measuring are influenced by the core material. Uh, the, since the core only represents a small portion of the path the flux is traveling through in a rod type structure, the influence of the core material is greatly re reduced. So what we're going to be looking at when measuring, this is a 61 material core by the way, and we also have 77 material cores here. So what we're going to be looking at is called rod permeability. So this is going to be a greatly derated number from the material's original initial permeability numbers. So looking at this equation here, we have a way to measure or to calculate our expected inductance value uh, given a rod permeability number and some details about our winding and geometry. So working backwards from this, we are able to, using this calculator uh, that we put on our website, we're able to reverse calculate from a known inductance and uh, geometric and coil information a rod permeability number that we can then compare against this graph which plots a few of our common materials in rod type geometries with a rod permeability number on the y-axis and a rod length to rod diameter ratio on the x-axis. So something to note here as we get to really low length to diameter ratios, our ability to differentiate between different material grades is greatly diminished. By the time you get to a one-to-one -one ratio, you can't tell any difference between the materials at all. So that leads in nicely about our discussion about geometry when measuring a rod type core. This rod type core is an almost actually under square uh, length to diameter ratio and we're not going to really easily be able to differentiate between these two materials with this type to length to diameter ratio. So a trick to being able to measure uh, low length to diameter ratio rods is to actually stack them together to create a longer rod. So we could see in this simulation, we have 10 cores, 10 ferrite rod cores stacked end to end inside of one winding. So these smaller squares in the center again are our ferrite cores. These wide rectangles on either side are going to be our winding. Now you are introducing air gaps by just stacking cores end to end, but relative to the amount of air that the flux is traveling through normally, these are fairly insignificant. As you can see, the majority of the flux remains contained within the coils. 
So that's not going to be too much of an issue as far as our measurement goes. So going back to our calculator, we have a couple things that we need to measure. We have our rod diameter here in millimeters, our rod length in millimeters, number of turns of our coil, the length our test coil is in the same direction of the length of the rod, and our series, measured series inductance in microhenries. So as the geometry of the rod is important, so is the coil length. So for this calculator to work optimally, it assumes for a single layer winding around the OD of the rod, and for best results, the length of the coil should cover as much of the rod core as is possible. That's the inductance modifier value here in the equation. You know, closer to that ratio of coil length to rod length is, to one, the more differentiation you'll be able to make between different material grades. So let's start off with our 61 material cores. And these are these cores are nearly the same size as one another, 61 and 77. Uh, we made them that way for comparison's sake in this video. So the first thing we're going to be needing is our diameter of our rods. So for the 61, we will measure both separately because there are slight differences, but they're fairly similar. So 9.47 millimeters. We'll enter that in. And we're only going to measure one piece out of the 10 I have here and the 10 I have here for the sake of uh, time. They're pretty similar to one another. So 8.15 millimeters for length. Since we're going to be using 10 of these, we'll just multiply that value by 10 for our rod length. So we'll put 81.5 five millimeters in here. Uh, number of turns. So this is a pre-made test coil. Uh, I made it out of a piece of shrink tubing and some 24 gauge uh, enamel magnet wire. So I, I know that this is 135 turns. Um, again, that's to get pretty well good coverage of the cores. So we can stack all of our cores in here. So 135. And we're going to need our coil length um, just approximately. So lastly, we're going to need our series inductance in microhenries. Now we want to take this at 10 kilohertz, and we're looking for LS, so LS series. So we'll just plug our test coil in here. And according to our key site U1733C LCR meter at 10 kilohertz, we're seeing 591.8 microhenries. So we enter that in, click enter, and we get our rod permeability value here, 26.89. So we can compare that on our chart our length to diameter ratio is 8.6. So we'll follow that up here. And we're landing somewhere between 61 and 67 material. Uh, again, these are, these are typical values. And also, there's a little bit of gap in the winding of our coil here to the ferrite. So that's influencing our measured inductance a little bit. But we're pretty close. The closest material on here to us is 61 material. So we can say with relative confidence that these are 61 material cores. Now, if we look at the same thing with the 
77 material cores. We'll see how those compare to the 61. So let's again take a diameter measurement for our 77 core. So we have 9.45. And our length measurement, we have 8.14. So again, times 10, 81.4. Number of turns, since we're gonna be using the same test coil, is still 135. Coil length hasn't changed. Our inductance hopefully will though. Okay, so right off the bat, we can see this is definitely a higher permeability material. Our inductance is up to 752 microhenries. And if we enter that into our calculator and click enter, we can see our rod permeability jumped all the way up to 34.32. So if we again follow that over on this chart, uh, we could see we're in the mid 30 range. Um, it could go either way for 33 material or 77 and 78 material. It's a little difficult to differentiate between the two because again you have majority of the flux is traveling through air and not the core so that the influence the core has on the inductance is, is greatly reduced. We could say with relative certainty that this is definitely not 61 or 67 material since the rod permeability is so much higher. Uh, with that ends my video. Uh, be sure to check out our new rod permeability calculator on our website at ferrite.com. Uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps out in identifying any cores that are unknown. Uh, with that, this is Mike Arison from Ferrite Products. Have a great day.